Hello everybody, welcome back to the Guitar Guts YouTube channel. I'm Mark Murray and today I'll be giving you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to install a 9 volt battery box into your guitar. It's a pretty easy mod on paper, but it can be stressful because you're putting a big hole in your guitar and it is permanent. Let's start with the tools you're going to need. You'll need a set of calipers. I prefer digital calipers, but regular will work. You're going to need a router to do the majority of the work here. I made a template to make this job a lot easier. You could see this wood block with the hole in it. That's what that is. We'll also need some double-sided tape and a straight edge. You might be able to get creative and substitute some tools out. If you did, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know about that. And if you follow this guide, take some pictures of the process and the results and send them to me. I'd love to see them. My Instagram and email are listed in the description below. And here's some of the safety equipment that you'll be using for this project. You'll definitely need a dust mask of some kind. Here I have an N95 and a set of safety glasses. I also use an actual face shield to protect my face because when you're using a router, small pieces of wood can go flying and you want to protect your face. You'll also want to have some type of ear protection. I use some nice earbuds. I don't like to wear gloves when I use a router or any type of other spinning tool because your gloves can get caught in something that spins. It's very important to know the depth this box will need to be installed at. Measure that with a pair of calipers like this. Then measure the thickness of the body. You need to make sure that you have plenty of depth so you don't come out on the front of the guitar while routing. Plus you'll want to have at least a quarter of an inch extra so you can install the screws with the battery box at the end of the job. We'll go over the safety stuff in just a minute so be sure to watch the full video before you attempt this mod. Now let's begin the process. So we're going to be heading outside to do that because it's a super messy job. Anytime you're using a router, pieces of wood, shavings, and wood splinters are flying all over the place. It becomes such a mess. So we're going to be going out to the front work area to do that. And Goto tries to make this easy on us. They give you this little piece of paper here, the assembly instructions, that tell you exactly how big the hole should be for this to sit down into the body. I've converted it to inches here because they use millimeters. And I've found the halfway points marked it here so it's centered with the neck it's going to be mounted right here the two pneumatic bridge is going to be right here on the opposite side and the electronics cavity is right down here so it's going to be a quick shot right over to the electronics cavity make it real easy to wire up and basically that's the spot there where this battery box is going to sit so we're going to be using this template i'll line it up with these lines that i marked on the body and the bit we have here loaded into the router as you can see has a ball bearing on it that ball bearing is going to ride on the inside of our wooden template and this the bit's going to stick out through the bottom so as it rides around on this inner edge it's going to copy this shape into the body of the guitar i made this template from a small piece of maple i bought at the local hardware store goto gives you the dimensions of the hole we need to make in their instructions so you can measure and mark the wood with those dimensions then I use the router to make the hole just going very slowly and carefully. The beauty of this template is if you make a mistake, you can just move over to a new spot on the template and try again until you get it perfect. If you make a mistake on the guitar, there's no going back. Also, this is going to speed the job up and make it safer, especially if you ever need to do this again. This is the battery box we'll be using, the Goto BB2. Now the router is super loud, it makes a ton of dust and wood shavings and wood chips that are going to be flying all over the place, so a couple things I'll be doing is wearing this dust mask here, so I'm not breathing in dust and all kinds of stuff like that. I'll be covering my head with a hat because I don't want this stuff in my hair, it will end up in my hair, you'll see in a second. I'll also be using some ear protection, some earbuds that I'm going to poke in there just because this thing is so loud. You're going to hear it in a second. And then I'll be using the full face shield just to make sure nothing's going in my eyes, nothing's going in my face. I don't want anything creeping into my hair or my ears. So we're going to have all the bases covered here. I'll also be using double-sided tape to hold the template down to the guitar so it doesn't slip off and mess up our cut. This is what I was talking about right here. Look at that. I'm covered in beautiful mahogany dust. All right, we got the first two passes here done and the hole looks excellent, great shape to it. But you can see the battery box needs to go down quite a bit more. So I've got my calipers out here and I've went ahead and measured the depth of this battery box. So this is gonna need to be 
this deep here. I've checked the body. The body is definitely quite a bit deeper, um, you know, three eighths of an inch further. So we're not gonna push through to the front of the guitar, but we do need to bring this down lower. And now that this shape is here, the ball bearing bit is gonna be able to ride straight inside the guitar. And we're pretty much set on our shape. So it looks awesome. The placement's perfect. This is one of those surgeries on a guitar that you might get a little nervous to even try because you're routing in a really big hole into your guitar, but this is gonna look great when it's done. So now I can see we still have quite a ways to go, probably close to a half inch deeper. What we're gonna do is set our router itself so that our bit comes that far through the bottom, which right now it's about a quarter inch deeper than it needs to be without the bracket on. And we're gonna adjust this to match maybe just past this length by a 16th inch or so. Whenever you make any type of adjustment on the router, be sure to unplug it because it's a super dangerous tool. And if you accidentally hit the power, that bit's spinning super fast. There's actually a bracket here that you can loosen and readjust how deep this is gonna cut. When you do routing like this, you always wanna do it in multiple passes too. You don't wanna to try to cut three quarters or a one full inch out at one time. You wanna do it in approximately, you know, three eighths of an inch or less and do it in multiple passes. So we got two passes so far. We're about um, almost three quarters, maybe uh, six tenths of an inch down and we're just gonna keep going. We're gonna start with our ball bearing exposed just a little bit. And as you can see, when I lay this down here, it's gonna be cutting a quarter of an inch approximately. When you look at it with the calipers here, you can see we're gonna to need to go a little bit further, but we'll get that in the next pass. We're gonna still need about a quarter of an inch, maybe even two, two more passes. So not a quick job, but you gotta do it right. It's not about speed in this situation. It's about precision and safely doing the job right. Remember to always work slowly when using a router and always keep two hands on the router. You never wanna operate it with one hand. It's too powerful of a tool to be doing that. Another pass down and I'm double checking the box to make sure we're still on track. I can see it needs to go down approximately another quarter of an inch or so. Between every pass, remeasure things and make sure that things are lining up because you know, an eighth inch here and an eighth inch here add up pretty quick to a quarter inch or three sixteenths of an inch. So I like to double check the measurements between each cut and each pass just to make sure we're still on track. And there we go. It's ready, perfectly set in there. With the Goto BB2 battery box, there is a small lip that hangs over the edge. So like you can see with mine, your shape doesn't have to be absolutely precise. This looks good. We need to add a hole that leads from the battery box to the control cavity to run the battery wires. Using this really long bit makes it easier to get the proper angle. Here's where it goes from the battery box. And here's where it comes through under the pick guard into the control cavity. Now I can run the wires and set the box into place. There are also a couple of screws that come with the battery box that we'll need to screw through the inside of the guitar. But again, you need to double check the depth of the box and the thickness of your guitar and the length of the screw to make sure that these screws aren't gonna come through the top of the guitar. The battery box comes with two wires. They'll be wired up exactly the same as a nine volt battery. The red wire will go to whatever components you're powering and the black wire will go to your ground. And there you have it, the battery box was successfully installed and now battery swaps will just take a few seconds instead of 10 or 20 minutes. With some guitars like Gibson Flying Vs or Fender Stratocasters, you need to remove the strings and then remove the pick guard to access the control cavity. Now you just pop the box open and change the battery. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I have many more like it on my channel, so I implore you to subscribe. I also do a guitar customizing and modification show here on the channel called Trash to Thrash where I take old beat up guitars, sometimes sent in from you guys, the viewers, and I mod and refinish them, making them into one of a kind shred machines. Check it out, there's a link down in the description for that show. And if you want me to do this battery box mod and anything else, a refinish or whatever and feature it on my channel, send me an email to mark at guitarguts.com and let's talk. I'll talk to you all very soon. Rock on my friends.